the scene. Agent Vodello? Where are you? On TV, of course. Where I was always meant to be. I mean, look at my hair. This is Sean Crow, watching WGS TV. To another installment of WGS TV right here on youtube.com slash Russell Gamer and ZFX TV. I'm the Russell Gamer. Don't be Billy Boudreau. I've got a few people to introduce you to. First off, he is the host of Hardcore Wrestling Radio, which can be heard exclusively on Spreaker.com slash HWR Media and YouTube.com slash HWR Show. It's the Illuminous One, the Shining Star, Rick Star. Rick, how are you shining tonight? Oh, I'm doing all right. Uh, there's a strong smell of cannabis in the air, and I can't have none tonight. But other than that, I'm doing okay. For those of you who don't know what cannabis is, look it up. We also have the man from South Park from YouTube.com slash KillerXKenny, simply known as Cartman. Cartman, what's up? Not much. Oh, yeah, and what's up? This guy. <laughs> we have two InstaGib game show gurus here in our midst. First off, James from the Big Easy is here. James, how you doing? It's a good day to donate, and I'll tell you why about the donation later on. And he's the Bay Area MVP. No, it's Will. Will, how you doing? I don't know if Alberto Del Rio was having a pie-eating contest, but that was a cherry stain in the match he had earlier today. And if you want to know what we're talking about, be sure you stay tuned in to our review of Friday Night Smackdown for the week of June 21st, 2013. We open up with Daniel Bryan coming out to kind of talk about, you know, his reactions to everything that happened on Monday Night Raw, kind of playing into the storyline. And then he starts talking about his match and about the fact that nobody respects him and that everybody still thinks he's the weakest link. And he believes that Randy Orton feels the same way, That which prompts Randy Orton to come out. Randy Orton saying, you know what? When I came to you and helped you out, it was out of respect, not pity. Daniel Bryan disagrees. So, you know what? I look in your eyes right now. I see no respect. I see nothing but pity. And tonight, I'm going to take that respect, and I'm going to shove it down your throat. And Randy Orton said, you know what? Fine. You want this? Just be forewarned that I'm going to hurt you. And that's how they pretty much uh, opened up and... Uh, uh, Friday Night Smackdown. I thought it was really good, but in all honesty, though, Rick, I was really looking forward to the Daniel Bryan Dean Ambrose match. I mean, look at the, what Dean, uh, what Seth Rollins and Daniel Bryan did. They put on a phenomenal match, and I know a lot of people out there were kind of somewhat disappointed over the fact that we, we didn't get to see Dean Ambrose and Daniel Bryan one on one. Um, you know, I have to agree with you, but I think. The, to be honest with you, when I saw this, I was a little bit more hyped up for this because it's definitely a follow-up for la, last night's, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me, Monday Night's Raw, so it, it made more sense for this to happen. Well, yes, I, I do have to agree with you on that one. I, I'm going to give the, the opening segment a 4 out of 5. I can't say nothing bad about either either one of them's mic work. I mean, Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton, when it comes to the, their promo skills, they got some good ones, and Daniel Bryan has just really been stepping it up as of what late over there on the uh, in the WWE, but Rick, up next, we saw Sheamus taking on one half of Team Road Scholars in Cody Rhodes, and it, it turned and it looked like it was turning into almost a submissions contest, wouldn't he? Wouldn't you say? Uh, yeah, and you know, I'll be honest with you, I never really uh, picked Cody Rhodes to be much of a submissionist in his matches. I mean, you know, he's always had some, you know, a good set of move sets, but I never really picked him out to be the moves. I mean. We know that Sheamus has his uh, his uh, Texas clover leaf, but then he um, he uh, you know Cody was trying to he had that move that Fuji armbar if I'm not mistaken was it? F F Fuji bar armbar. Fuji bar armbar. But anyways, no um, but he had him he had him locked in for a good amount of time and he's just he, but you know Sheamus was just pretty much just toughing it out and so he had to you know try to remaneuver it and that's when Sheamus pretty much got out of it. Um, and then Sheamus got him in his clover leaf, uh, and then that's when he pretty much tapped out. Um, I really have to give this 
a 3.5, almost maybe even a, uh, between that and almost a four, uh, you know, four star match. Um, after the match, we saw um, you know, Damian Sandow get involved, and that's you know, of course, where we you know we're going to see uh, Sheamus and Sandow feud probably go into um, Money in the Bank. I would have to agree with that one, if not in the Money in the Bank ladder match itself. Um, up next on Friday Night SmackDown, though, James, Wade Barrett cashed in his rematch clause for the Intercontinental Championship, taking on Curtis Axel with The Miz on commentary. Talk about this match. Yeah, this one is more back and forth, back and forth. And um, the ending was that Curtis Axel got the pin with after a single arm swinging neck breaker. And, oh yeah, also at ringside, doing commentary with the Miz, so it looks like it was gonna be it's gonna be a Miz curse Axel feud that's gonna come up uh maybe t uh, towards Money in a Bank pay per view. Mm. But, but right now but your winner and still intercounter champion curse Axel. Fluke. Your score? <laughs> I'll give this a three point five out of five. Will, for probably one of the few times we've seen in the WWE, up next we had a Divas match with two Divas who actually know what they're doing inside the ring in the form of AJ Lee and Natalia. Talk about this match. Oh, boy. Well, we are now in the AJ Lee era now, ladies and gentlemen. And this match, I, I could say it's a little bit of promise, but basically... It was all basically AJ offensive whatnot. I mean, Natalia had a couple moves in, but at the end of the day, you got AJ hooks in her and that finisher the Black Widow and gets Natalia to tap. Now, we didn't know that Caitlyn was watching backstage with Layla. You know, all this mental capacity in her head, you know... This is going to be a storyline of mind games, because that's all it's ever been. And you see Oksana walking over, makes fun of her, so... That's what Billy's favorite Caitlin diva. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. And, and so what does Caitlyn do? Hit her with a water bottle. And then she tackles her, throws her on the ground a few times, and hibbity boop blah you know, Caitlyn wins. But on the match, I will give this... A not so good 2.5 out of 5. I thought Natalia could have put a lot of offense, and uh, I can't wait for AJ and Caitlyn to get a rematch going. Hopefully, money in the bank, perhaps. Last week on Friday Night SmackDown, Alberto Del Rio and Chris Jericho were tag team partners. This week, they are actually rivals in the in this following match. Alberto Del Rio took on Chris Jericho. Now there were a lot of crazy spots in this match, and one of them resulted in Alberto Del Rio with a, getting a huge knot and getting busted open over the, his right eyebrow. Um, I, I don't, I wasn't able to catch what spot at what point in the match that happened at, honestly, but it, it, Rick, it, that looked pretty bad, didn't it? Um, yeah, it did, actually. Um, that was uh, real... Uh, terrible um i don't remember exactly where the actual actual spot was i was in between eating and making supper so but i did see it happen um so you could probably refresh the, you know, the people that actually where it happened um but it was a really great match um i was more uh focused on where um the uh where uh you know Dolph ziggler came in and of course this was after um Rodriguez, uh, uh, Ricardo Rodriguez came in. Now, this is what I found 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 a little bit weird. Ricardo Rodriguez came in, and Chris Jericho has him and the Lion Tamer or the Walls of Jericho, whichever one you want to call. It. I call it the Walls of Jericho, uh, the the Lion Tamer, because he had a, it was more of that version. Um, anyways, how are props to Michael Cole for actually calling it that? He said that Jericho had R Rodriguez in the Walls of Jericho, the Lion Tamer version so uh, props to michael cole for saying that yeah anyways um now the funny part is is the ref doesn't throw out the match match is still going on now how often do we see this happen never but okay fine whatever we see ziggle come in and attack the uh, you know, uh, alberto del rio and that's when the ref says oh wait hold on now i gotta throw out the match because uh you know there's interference 
I don't think Ricardo ever touched uh, Jericho. I don't think Ricardo ever put his hands on him, which I believe was one of the reasons why the referee didn't call the match right then and there. But mm, excuse me. But uh, because of the fact, I thought this was a, a good match, and Jericho didn't take too kindly to Don Ziggler's interference and ends up giving him a code breaker for his troubles. But then Del Rio, seeing his opening, comes back into the ring, and for about the seventh time tonight on Friday Night SmackDown, executes the super kick to the side of Don Ziggler's head. I mean, he... He was just using the, the super kick so many times in that match. I'm like, okay, it's like the, is he the Mexican Shawn Michaels? Is he the Mexican Heartbreak King? But uh, other than that, I thought it was a good match with Del Rio and Jericho. And again, Matt props to Michael Cole for actually calling Jericho's Walls of Jericho on Ricardo the Lion Tamer version. So I got to give Michael Cole some respect for that. Uh, I got to go four out of five. But, um, Rick, up next, we, of course, we had Jer uh, Chris Christian returning on Monday Night Raw. And, of course, he's going to have his big return on Friday Night SmackDown, taking on Drew McIntyre of, of 3MB. Talk about this match. Um, well, not really much to talk about, let's face it. Um, you know, Christian's coming back. Drew McIntyre is, uh, well, you know, part of the three main jobbers. And, uh, you know, or however you want to, you know, put that, you know, Three main bitches. Yeah, three, three main, main bitches. bitches. Yeah, thank you. Um, in a matter of a short time, uh, he, you know, he hits the kill switch, and um, that's it. The big thing is, is he tries to shoot how he wants to say how he's great to be back on SmackDown, and he wants to have that quote unquote one more match. And before he finishes it, what happens? Shield comes down, surrounds him, and uh, in, in a short time, he gets his ass kicked, and he gets put in the uh, the, the triple power bomb. Your score? Um, I'd have to give it a 3.5. I'm sorry, a 3 out of 5. I, I didn't see anything really special out of it. It was just kind of like, you know, this again. You know. You want to talk about a saying that someone has made synonymous. Chris, Christian with his one more match uh, saying that he's had throughout his career the past couple of years has actually uh, made that saying his own. And when he said it again tonight on Friday Night SmackDown, you know, he, I think the crowd was actually into it just a little bit more, uh, you know, than I thought it would be. But uh, anyway, main event, James, Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton. Was Daniel Bryan the weak link or did the Viper strike against the bearded goat man? What happened in this match? Ooh, this was this is actually one of those you know hard to explain what, but this is what this was actually a good match. Um, as you. As you know, I usually use the back and forth one, but this was actually, it was, um, you know, you got a lot of spots between Orton and uh, Daniel Bryan, and at the end, um, what was this that, um, Randy Orton was going for an RKO, but then Daniel Bryan rolled onto the floor, uh, Orton hits the back suplex on Dan Bryant on the barricade, and then he Orton put uh puts Dan Bryant onto the apron, go for that DDT that he usually do, but then um uh Dan Bryant got uh got out of it, uh back on up onto the barricade, did the knee off the apron into uh, onto Orton. They went into the ring, though, uh, did the suicide dive, and um, from the ring to the, and then the referee was count, uh, counting. Daniel Bryant got back into the ring first at the count of eight, and the referee decided to count a little faster and counted on out. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that referee counted fast. Like nine, ten, ring the bell, ring the bell. Um, but you want to buy a count out, Daniel Bryan. But, Orton went out to, uh, outside, grabbed my phone, was like, I want this match restarted. The referee's like, no. Bryan's like, yes. Referee, no. Orton, uh, uh, Bryan, yes. Yes, no, yes. And then, uh, Daniel Bryan was doing his yes chant. Orton was looking on, and that was the end of SmackDown. I guess this match a four, five out of five. It is just absolutely phenomenal on, on just how over Daniel Bryan is 
with just the words of either yes or no with the WWE Universe, and it's just absolutely... It, it, it's just as phenomenal as the what chance were with Stone Cold Steve Austin. It was just that good on that one. Uh, Carmen, you, you wouldn't have to agree in that statement that, you know, it, it's just amazing that Daniel Bryan can actually captivate a crowd just by raising up his arms and going yes or yes, 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 like that. I hate to sound like a broken record here, but he has his own herd. <laughs> he has his herd of, he has his own herd of followers that follow him just because he says the word yes or no. Yeah, but like I said, it, it, it is just absolutely phenomenal. And, it, and and one's gonna wonder where they go next with uh, Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton for that matter. You know, are they gonna take it to like a match three? You know, match one we didn't have a clean finish. Match two a count out. So I wonder if they'll have like a a rubber match on on uh, Monday Night Raw. Rick, would you see that as a feasible scenario? Um, you know what? It's a good question um, because I think. Right now, I mean, if they want to do it, if not, they might even want to push it to the pay-per-view. Um, a, Br a Brian Orton feud? Yeah, I mean, right now they have the rubber band match, and they started the rubber band match. But to do it on Raw, yeah, it would make sense, but I think they would might want to push it to uh, the, you know, they want, might want to make it for the, uh, the, the pay-per-view. That's my thoughts. Because those are two pay-per-view quality superstars. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, hands down. Yes, hands down. Overall score on Friday Night Smackdown this week, it's going to get a 3.5 out of 5 for me. The opening segment with Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton, I thought it was really good. Sheamus and Cody Rhodes, um, good to see Sheamus bringing back the uh, the Cloverleaf. But uh, again, they're really just furthering this rivalry with Sheamus and Damian Sandow. Possibly two Money in the Bank pay-per-view, if not in the Money in the Bank ladder match in itself. Curtis Axel is defeating Wade Barrett. Uh, again, Wade Barrett really didn't do anything with the Intercontinental Championship. So I guess they finally did that to write him out. And now possibly the start of, Cur of Curtis Axel and The Miz over the Intercontinental Championship. I'd really like to see how those two work. AJ Lee and Natalya, again, like I said before, two WWE Divas who are not only hot, but they know what they're doing inside the ring, and you had them together, and it was finally good to see Oksana get beat down with a water bottle again. Alberto Del Rio and Chris Jericho, a great match. Still trying to figure out what spot it was that caused Del Rio to get that huge knot and, and his head busted open. But uh, it looked really, really, it didn't look too good for that matter. I'm pretty sure Del Rio was asking for ice packs uh, backstage on Friday Night Smackdown after that was over. Christian, um, Christian and Drew McIntyre. Um, Christian looking really good shape. You know, they're going to they're gonna build him up. They're going to build him back up the, for possibly something. Maybe a championship run at Alberto Del Rio. That one would not be uh, an, an unlikely scenario. They've had a rivalry before. Uh, uh, Christian and Alberto Del Rio so uh, that scenario wouldn't be you know wouldn't be too far-fetched in my opinion and Daniel Bryan defeating Randy Orton by count out you know we've seen the starts of a pop again a feud now with uh, Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton and who knows where they take it from here we you know whether they'll continue it like a series of matches on Monday Night Raw or if they can if they can actually take it all the way to the pay-per-view for money in the bank you know, who, you know, only time will tell. But Rick, for me, is going to get a 3.5 out of 5. What uh, What about you? Your overall score and thoughts on Friday Night SmackDown? Uh, yeah, I have to definitely give it a 3.5 out of 5. Maybe some, maybe even a 4, but I wouldn't give it too much more than that. Um, I still think the Jericho, uh, the, the Jericho, Matt, uh, Alberto Del Rio match kind of it was a little flaky with the way it ended, but you know that's the WWE for you. Um, I think they just ended it that way just to maybe even like start the feud because uh, with um, Ziggler and Jericho, because Jericho and Ziggler have always had issues in the past. Um, do I think Jericho is turning heel? Very, that's a big question mark. Um, you never know. They're kind of giving uh, Ziggler, uh, they kind of making him look like the weak, uh, the weak guy. You know, even though he's turning, you know, he's turning face. You figure if he's turning face, he'd get this big pop and just not happen in the right way. Um, hopefully, after he gets uh, finally the full clean bill of health and uh, he's not getting his uh, head beat in, you know, literally, uh, it'll start looking good. But uh, just that's about it. All right, let's go over to James next. James, your overall score and thoughts on Friday Night SmackDown. 
Uh, for me, I'll give this a 3.5 out of 5. I enjoyed the first segment and like in that main event for Dane Bryan and, or- and Randy Orton. Um, you know, and I think this may continue on to where maybe both maybe in the Money in the Bank ladder match for the WWE Championship. Mm-hmm. I can see that happening. Um, the Cody Rhodes Sheamus match it's just it's just more to uh, hope up the feud between Sandow and Sheamus, and I see them in the World Heavyweight Title Money in the Bank. Um, I'm kind of sad that uh, uh, the whole submission between between AJ and Natalya didn't in the way that usually happens. But um, tap out on the butt, tap out on the butt, squeeze, squeeze. No, that's, no, that's, that's Layla. No, that's Layla. That's Layla. Layla's. Oh. Um, I'm interested to see how the Chris Axel Miz feud gonna help out. Um, it's, well, Natalia, uh, uh, Oksana and Caitlyn, I think they just gonna, like, do it one, maybe one, maybe one of two matches. AJ may get involved with that one. Um, I wanna... I want to see how this thing with Alberto Del Rio, Chris Jericho, and maybe um, Ziggler, because I think Chris Jericho may get involved in this feud, but I don't know. It's nice to see Christian again, but we obviously knew that she was going to beat the hell out of him. But that's all. That's my overall score. And Will, your overall score and thoughts on Friday Night SmackDown. <laughs> all right, <clears throat> let's see. The opening segment with Brian and Orton. Yes, this is going to lead to a big stellar storyline with a lo- with a lot on the line and a possible heel turn for whoever. I don't know. I can't pick on one right now. Uh, Sheamus and Cody Rhodes. Okay match. Sheamus hitting that clover leaf by mostly known by Dean Malenko. Uh, but uh, Sandow came in and interrupted, but Sheamus did win the match, so that was pretty good. Um, Barrett and the flute, Curtis Axel. See, WWE's making a mistake putting that belt on Axel. Just very bad right now. I mean, Miz is that commentary. Carly. Thank you. Thank you, Carly. And I just think what the Miz was saying was pretty dead on, but this match was... Uh, Put an IV injection needle on me, put me to sleep. Um, AJ and Natalia, well, like I stated earlier, this is the AJ Lee era, but there's a lot more to the story. Kind of hope Caitlyn will get her rematch at Money in the Bank, hopefully. And uh, Caitlyn is psycho. Uh, Jericho and Del Rio. I don't know what to make of this match. I really don't know. I, I mean, two stellar combatants. Too bad Ziggler came into the ring and uh, caused a disqualification for Jericho, and which was a result of a coat breaker and a super kick. Ouch. And Christian back on SmackDown against the th- three muscle bound idiots. Or you have your own 3MB suggestions. Y'all can make fun of them however you want. Uh, Christian wins with these despite being three on one then the shield coming out saying welcome back christian beating the piss out of him mm, yeah Pretty much. and then you had this i'm sorry to say but i have to comment on this who in the blue hell is renee young that interviewed paul Heyman? because paul okay. Heyman ripped her an ass <laughs> that could be a good thing or a bad thing I meant, well, you said Cartman, he knows how to talk on the mic and whatnot. He knows how to cut a promo. But we'll save that for another segment, ladies and gentlemen. And finally, the match of Orton and Bryan. Back and forth. Cool. But if anybody noticed, the ref only counted to six and then decided to stop the match? No, re- no, no, it wasn't. I see six, five or six, and then... He, no, he, he called for no, no, five or six. Then he started counting fast when after uh, after Daniel Bryan came back again. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ring the bell. That's it. I must have not seen that part, but yeah, I mean, part. I don't know if this is part of the storyline. One, 
two, three, four, five, six. Dan O'Brien gets six. Get gets in. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Well, I must I must have missed that part. That was the only thing I must have missed. And then he was livid. Restart the match. Yeah. Dan O'Brien, what more? He wants, wants more. Feed him more. more. Wait, wrong but, person. Yeah. Yeah. Wrong person. So overall, I will give this a 3.3 out of 5. But I'm more intrigued to see how Orton and Brian's storyline will progress from here. Well, we want to know now from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Fighting Night Smackdown this week. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Ladies and gentlemen, Rick Starr has an exciting announcement about HWR coming up next week. That's right. This coming Wednesday, on the 20th, uh, we will have Axel Rotten. That's right. The ECW legend will be coming on our next segment on Hardcore Wrestling Radio. Be sure if you want to come join us and ask us any questions about Axel Rotten, you can join us on our uh, Skype. That's Hardcore Crew 1, all lowercase, and you can ask us any questions. That'll be on June 26th, 2013. So if you want to come on in and ask the hardcore, uh, hardcore legend any questions, come on in and hang out with us. The man from South Park, simply known as Cartman, is over on YouTube.com slash KillerXKenny. Cartman, what you got coming up? Uh, Minecraft, uh, racing stuff, pretty much it. We also have two insta gift game show gurus in the form of James from the, from the Big Easy and the Bay Area MVP, known as Will. Guys, what you got coming up? Uh, uh, well, go ahead, James. I think you had an announcement about your donation. Um, yes. You remember earlier in the show, I said I donated. Um, I donated to three things, but one of the things I donated to, this is not a game show related thing. This is called the Mario Marathon. This is their sixth year to do this marathon, and it is for child play. And child play is, you know, it's, um, give like toys and games to these children hospital, you know, for all, for the, you know, all that. Very good and donation, ladies and gentlemen. Go out there and donate. So what it is is that they have goals, uh, a level list. So as how much you donate is how much they will um play and they will play like different ma uh, mario games like the they just finished uh galaxy 2 so right now they right now at this moment as we were t as we're talking they are doing um uh, super mario wii and they will do world galaxy one sunshine super mario's three two and one and yeah and all, as I said, all donation goes to Child's Play. Yes, same thing I'm doing here too, watching Mario Marathon, you know. These are very good-hearted people that care for the kids. You know, the some of the players on there, there's Scott, there was Chris, there was Sonny. Uh, I think there's another guy named Trent on there. Um, but these are very good-hearted people, you know. Um, whoever likes Mario Marathon, it's on Twitch.tv. Or you can go to their website at MarioMarathon.com. You know, donate, give a little, because the kids are our future. Go out there and donate. Also, don't forget to please subscribe to YouTube.com slash WrestleGamer and YouTube.com slash TV Network. So for the luminous one, the shining star, Rick Star, the man from South Park, simply known as Cartman, and our two Instagive game show gurus, James and the Big Easy, and the Bay Area MVP, known as Will, I'm the Russell Gamer, Double B Billy Boudreaux, saying thank you very much for watching. We also like to remind everyone that Gulf Coast Wrestling presents the Rock in the House weekend with our very special guests, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson of the Rock and Roll Express. Friday, June 28th at the Station Bar and Grill in Bruce Hart, Louisiana. Saturday, June 29th at the King C Hall in Plaquemine, Louisiana. And Sunday, June 30th at the American Legion Hall in Abbeville, Louisiana. For more information, please call 337-251-0546. Or visit gcw-golfcoastwrestling.com. Tonight's show is also sponsored by James Secretly Private Neutro. Watch a homeless person choke James out for money. Secretly, it only have one. And secretly, it secretly it only have one person watching. Cartman. Gay. Okay. Star concerts. Star